So my name is Kevin Tai. This is my last semester here at Five Branches. I am in the DTCM MTCM dual degree program and I am part of the San Jose campus. Yeah, so the Sutter Hospital externship is an exciting externship for students who are willing to uh, have more exposure to the hospital setting. So basically how it works is we meet from 8 a.m. to roughly about 4 p.m. So when we come to the hospital at 8 a.m., we have our morning report for two hours. During the morning report, we discuss our homework. So sometimes it can be a case study, sometimes it can be a reflection or a summary of a research paper uh, that we've been reading or some sort of uh, research we've been conducting of, about the uh, cases we are learning in the hospital. And then we will have a lecture series. Sometimes the lecture is given by a faculty member, so one of the integrated medicine faculty. Sometimes it's given by outside speakers. We've had a nutritionist, we've had a physical therapist, we've had a research fellow uh, to give us our uh, lecture. After the morning report at 10, 10 a.m., we go to the morning rounds with the Western medical doctors and nurses. So this semester, we are focusing on the oncology clinic. So we are working in the oncology department. We are meeting with the oncology doctors and nurses at 10 a.m. to round on their patients and to learn more about how their patients are doing. Sometimes the doctors will see that we are there and they will refer some patients to us on the spot. Um, patients that are experiencing a lot of pain, patients who are experiencing constipation, patients who are experiencing anxiety and depression, they will usually refer them to us. Afterward, around 12 o'clock, we have our lunch time. During the lunch time, we talk about our cases, we look at the charts for the patients that we're going to see, but at the same time, during lunch time, we have a, a uh, noon rounds. So for the noon conference is usually conducted by the hospital. So the hospital will either have a tumor board where they discuss real cases and talk to colleagues and come up with a treatment plan or it will be a lecture series given by one of the doctors on various different topics. So every week that topic will change. So during lunch we eat lunch, we discuss patients and then we learn with the hospital staff. In the afternoon, it's more hands-on. We will go to each patient room and we will check the patient's condition and then we will treat the patients. So we will usually have a list of patients who we've been seeing in the hospital, so we will go back and check on them. At the same time, we will go to patients who need our consult. So those are new patients that were referred to us by their MDs and we will go see if they want acupuncture treatment, what's the issue that they're having, and then come up with a treatment plan and either treat on the spot or come back later to treat according to their schedule. So we will treat patients for the whole afternoon until about four o'clock. Sometimes if in the afternoon, we will have an extra lecture series based on uh, faculty availability, or in the future, when we start doing some research, we will have time to meet with our faculty to conduct research, to work on our research projects, or if we have some educational projects, we would also work on that as well. And then we wrap it up, everything around 4 p.m., and then we head home. So I think that the most impressive moment in my externship uh, experience in the hospital so far has been treating critically ill patients. So in the hospital setting, it's an honor, it's, and it's a privilege to be able to care for patients who are in probably their most vulnerable time of their lives. We have been treating patients in the rehab floor. We have been treating patients who have cancer. We've been treating patients who are critically ill in the ICU. So those are the kind of cases that I don't usually get to see in our daily clinic. And those are the kind of cases that we can really see a positive effect of acupuncture and Chinese medicine uh, on those patients. For example, I have this patient who had a stroke and after the stroke, she has been recovering in the rehab floor. And because of her stroke, the half, half, uh, half of her body is almost, has no sensation, it's almost paralyzed. So her left arm and left leg is in extreme weakness and uh, no sensation at all. 
And as we are treating her, she's starting to gain more sensation. As we are treating her with the needle, she's starting to have more mob mobility and range of motion, which is a really positive change that we are able to see. And for the past couple of treatments that we have with her, she is showing a really positive relief from the acupuncture and she's getting the more of her mobility uh, back. But at the same time, because she's getting her sensation back, she's experiencing more pain. So for the past couple of visits, we have been treating her for her pain. And usually when we first go into the room to treat her, her pain scale is about a nine or 10 out of 10 and it's a sharp pain. But every time after we finish with the acupuncture treatment, we would ask her again and the pain would reduce to about two or three. And there was one time the pain reduced to none. And that's, that's really good because we are really seeing a positive effect on those patients with just the help of acupuncture. So one of the great examples and one, a really good case study that I had in the hospital was this patient who was a stroke patient. So basically she had a stroke, she had her head on the right side of her uh, skull, and then she had to have her skull removed during the surgery. And basically when we first saw her, she never done acupuncture before and she is almost completely paralyzed on the left side of her body. She was extreme, ex extremely weak and has no sensation on the left upper extremity and left lower extremity. So basically what we did was we did acupuncture to help the blood flow, to help the chi flowing, and also to help her slowly gain the mobility back. And after a couple of treatments, it was great to see that her sensation is slowly coming back and she was actually having more movement, more mobility, and more range of motion on her left side of the body. After a couple of treatments, she started experiencing severe pain on the left side of her body. While pain is not good, uh, it was reassuring to us that she was gaining more sensation. So I really saw a huge effect of acupuncture on this patient, especially for her pain and weakness. Every time when we go to her, she would have a sharp pain about 9 or 10 out of 10. Usually after the treatment, the pain went down dramatically to a three, a two, or sometimes it was a zero. She was really excited to see us and she really looked forward to our treatment every week. One thing that, a story that's really funny is that one time we went to her room to treat her and it was actually the time for her occupational therapy. So when her OT came in, she actually waved the therapist goodbye so that she could have more time to do the acupuncture treatment. And overall, she was, she had a really positive effect on the ac acupuncture and I, we were really uh, seeing a great a response for this patient just by using the acupuncture. At the end, we really help her gain more mobility and more sensation back on the left side of her body. And she tried to refer her husband and other friends to see acupuncture as well. This is one of the examples of how acupuncture can really help with people who are severely ill, who are in probably the most vulnerable stage of their life. And I was really impressed and I was really glad to see that. So basically to prepare for the program interview, I did some research about the organization, which is the Integrative Medicine, International Center for Integrative Medicine. Basically, I think what they're looking for is a candidate who has these three aspects. Number one is clinical practice. They want someone who has had enough clinical practice, enough clinical skills that they are competent enough when seeing a patient in a the hospital, they already know what the treatment plan and treatment principle and the diagnosis is. Number two is someone who is willing to participate in research. In order to promote the Chinese medicine and the acupuncture in the hospitals, we have to practice evidence-based medicine. This is evidence-based medicine and a patient-centered care in the hospital. So if you are not willing to do research, if you are not willing to conduct studies that is going to advance the profession, then you are not someone uh, these people are looking for. Number three is education. 
you have to be someone who is willing to be trained and eventually become an educator to train others. Because Chinese medicine is a medicine that is passed down for thousands of years by teacher to student, by mentor to mentees. So if you take everything you learn from the program and you just apply it only to your private practice and you don't want to teach the next generation, then you are probably not someone they are looking for. So to prepare for the interview, all I did was to really think about how I could contribute to these three aspects, clinically, research-wise, and also education-wise. And I told them what my plans were in all these three aspects. And I told them how I could contribute to the hospital program and what I wanted to learn from the hospital program. So for students who are considering a program, this is an excellent program. I would highly recommend anyone who have the slightest interest to apply for the program. This program is dramatically different than any other externships you are likely going to experience. Because we are working in a hospital setting, we are not working in a private clinic setting. So the amount of patients, the kinds of patients, and the different patient population will be dramatically different than what you are used to be seeing. You will see patients who are critically ill, you will see patients who are in the most vulnerable stages of their lives. You will see diseases that you only get to read about in the textbooks. And for people who really want a challenge, this is a big challenge and this is a big commitment. But at the end, this will bring you a lot of learning and a lot of joy. For people who are considering this program, I would recommend you to consider the two-year residency program. Although there is an option for you to do the one semester observation, I think one semester is not enough. One semester is only enough for you to get familiarized with the hospital system, to get familiarity with the ele electronic health record. But that's basically it. You don't really get too much hands-on if you are only here for one semester. As you progress in a two-year residency program, especially after you have obtained your acupuncture license, you will be more hands-on. You will be able to treat patients independently. You will be sent to different departments in the hospital depending on the specialty of your choosing. And that is huge. That is some experience you will never get anywhere else. For people who are considering this program, you need to have two things. Number one, you really need to have a deep understanding and very competent in your clinical skills. You must have a deep understanding of Chinese medicine because this is not a foundation class. This is not a foundation uh, actionship. You need to be already coming into the program competent and confident of your Chinese medicine theory, of your Chinese medicine diagnosis. You need to be good at needling technique and you need to be able to communicate with patients effectively. Number two, you need to have a strong foundation in Western medicine. Because this is a Western medicine hospital. This is not a Chinese medicine hospital. So you need to be able to know and understand the terminology that Western practitioners use. When you look at the health record, when you look at the electronic charting, Everybody uses Western medicine. Everybody uses even abbreviations, not even full words. They use abbreviations. So you need to be able to read the doctor's chart, the nurse's chart, the physical therapist's chart. You need to understand what they're saying in order to have a better understanding of your patient. You need to understand the foundation of Western medicine. What is stroke, for example? Stroke is different in terms of Chinese medicine and Western medicine. What is hypertension? What are the very basic Western terminologies? You have to be confident and competent in those areas so that you are not, you are not having to relearn the foundations when you are in the hospital. And finally, you, you, you must be someone who is confident enough to treat patients who are critically ill because those patients are very different from the patients from your private practice. So overall, you need to be someone who is uh, competent and confident enough in both traditional Chinese medicine and Western medicine, and you are someone who likes to challenge, and you are someone willing to dedicate a lot of time and energy into this program.